Hi everyone, my name is Laura Wisse and today I'll be talking about hippocampal subfield anatomy following up on my previous tutorial on whole hippocampal anatomy. So I first want to refer you to some literature, this book chapter by Ricardo and Sausti, this book by Duvernois, and this paper by Songlin Ding and Gary Van Hoosen. And I do want to point out that today I'll show an image and segmentation from uh, this paper. So I first want to start with some terminology. So generally when we refer to hippocampal subfields, referring to corneomonies regions 1, 2 and 3. Although I want to point out that some, reg some neuroanatomists uh, argue that there's also a CA4 region, whereas other neuroanatomists um, uh, refer to that region as hylus. Uh, there's the dente gyrus, uh, which is sometimes also called fascia dentata. And there's the subiculum, presubiculum, and parasubiculum, and prosubiculum. And prosubiculum is actually a region that neuroanatomists also disagree on whether or not it is a separate region. And today I'll actually refer to subiculum, when I refer to subiculum, I mean subiculum pre and parasubiculum. And another thing I want to point out is that in the segmentations that I'll show today, the hydus region is actually included in the dente gyrus label. Uh, and another thing I want to point out before I get started is that there's actually a lot of heterogeneity uh, in hippocampal subfield anatomy. So what I'll show you is just one example, but it can actually be quite heterogeneous. So this is a post-mortem image of the medial temporal lobe. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit cut off here, uh, but this is the medial end, this is the lateral end, this is the amygdala, and this is the entorhinal cortex. And the purple that you see here is the anterior tip of the hippocampus and purple here refers to subiculum. So going in a posterior direction, you see that this region is becoming bigger and it develops these bumps, the digitations. And here in the lateral corner, you see now a red region, uh, which is CA1, which I think in general uh, appears in this corner in a, from an anterior to posterior direction. Going further posterior, you see that these digitations become more pronounced and that the CA1 region is extending medially Going further posterior, you see actually that some of these digi digitations start to widen and there's actually some gray matter, which is light appearing here in the middle, which is the dente gyrus, uh, which is in dark blue. Shouldn't be confused with this dark blue, darker blue region, which is just hippocampal sulcus. Going further posterior, uh, you see um, that most of these digitations, most of this superior portion is CA1 now. Both digitations start to widen now and start to show some dente gyrus and the uncle region now consists of this green region, which is CA2. And uh, fortunately it is a little bit cut off here. But I do want to point out that especially this uncle region can be super heterogene heterogeneous. So it could be different subfields in different locations. So I, I do want to point that out. So going further posterior, you see CA2 appearing in the top of these digitations. And it's now interchanged between CA1 and CA2. And going further posterior, you now have subiculum, CA1 in the lateral corner, CA2 back to CA1 and then CA2. And the middle portion now is the dente gyrus. And another thing that I want to point out is that between the CA regions and the subiculum regions and the DG is this dark band, which is called stratum radiatum lacunosum moleculari, uh, which can also be seen on in vivo images uh, of high enough resolution, of course. So going further posterior, you start to see this yellow region, CA3, which appears on the top here. It appears in the uncus here, and it's also appearing in the middle portion of the dente gyrus here. So you have subiculum CA1 going to CA2, 
to CA3, to CA2, back to CA1, to CA2, and to CA3. Okay, so going further posterior, you can see that this middle portion of CA3 is starting to become back bigger, and the digitations have actually flattened out. And then further posterior, you see actually that these two regions start to merge in something that we sometimes call the X. And you see that the CA1 region has disappeared um, from the uncle region, and fortunately here a portion is cut off, so this looks a little bit weird. So going further posterior, actually the two portions, the medial, uh, sorry, the medial portion and the lateral portion have actually separated, uh, where the medial portion is the uncle region where you now have CA3, a little portion of CA2 and dente gyrus here. And then the lateral portion looks very much like the hippocampal body with subiculum, CA1 in the lateral corner, CA2, CA3 curving inwards and the dente gyrus. And you can see already the two interlocking C. So here is one and here is one, which is really considered a really typical shape of the hippocampal body. Going further posterior, you see CA2 disappearing and CA3 increasing in size. And here you have again this typical hippocampal body shape. And further posterior, you see uh, the uncle region becoming smaller. And you see that it contains of CA3. I do want to point out that a little portion of the segmentation is missing here. And that is because the segmentation is based on histology sections uh, that unfortunately did not cover the full length of the hippocampus. So the same holds for some subiculum region that is missing here. So keep that in mind. It, it doesn't actually stop here, but it's just cut off in this slice. So going in a further posterior direction, you see the uncus disappearing. And then on the next slice, you're in the hippocampal body. So Anterior to this was the hippocampal head, and this is the hippocampal body. And then you see this typical body shape, so we're going a little bit further posterior. And again, you see subiculum, CA1, CA2, CA3 curving inwards, and then these two interlocking Cs between CA3 and the dente gyrus. Going further posterior, you can see that we continue to have this very typical shape. And then going further posterior, you start to see some changes with maybe some digitations here. And the shape in general changes a little bit. And then fortunately, again, we're missing some of the segmentations here. Going further posterior, um, you see a little bit of a digitation. And the dente gyrus is protruding a little bit in the medial direction. And in general, I think the hippocampal shape is rotated a little bit in a clockwise direction. And you see some of these digitations here. And then going further, more digitations. And you start to see the shape changing. There's more of a clockwise rotation here. Um, but still you see a little bit of the body shape with subiculum, CA1, 2, 3, curving inwards, and then the, the gyrus in the middle. Going further posterior, you see even more of these digitations, and CA3 doesn't curve inwards as more anymore. And then, unfortunately, a little bit is cut off the hippocampus. Most of it seems to be subiculum and CA1 here, although it's not super clear. I do want to point out again that also the tail can be very variable in which subfields are present and what it looks like. So this is just one of the examples of what a hippocampal tail can look like. So to go over all of this a little bit again, what you first see here is the subiculum, uh, which then becomes bigger and starts to show these digitations where a medial portion is CA1 in red, if you go further posterior, these digitations become bigger and widen and you see this dente gyrus region in the middle and you also start to see CA2 appearing 
in the superior portions, but also in the ankle region. Um, then going further posterior, you start to see the CA3 region appearing, uh, and also in the middle of the dentate gyrus. As you go further posterior, you see that this uncle region is separated from this lateral portion, which starts to look like the hippocampal body with the typical subiculum CA1, 2, 3, which is curving inwards and dentate gyrus. And then the uncle region here only contains CA3 and dentate gyrus. Then you're in the hippocampal body and then further posterior, uh, the hippocampal body shape is looking a little bit different. Um, it's rotated a little bit more, you see more digitations, uh, and that would be the tail of the hippocampus. And again, I want to point out that there's a lot of variability in uh, the subfield composition, especially in regions such as the uncus and the tail, but also in general, so please keep that in mind. Uh, so I hope that this was helpful, and thank you for listening.